it was this guy. He was like, "You're a queen." And then I was like, "What? If, what if I'm not a queen? What if I'm just regular? What if I'm a whore out here? <laughs> you don't well, know nothing about me. You call me a black queen." Well, that's the thing. Even when you a whore, guys now are so. I, and I'm I don't know how to feel about it because like guys are like, um, you want you're you're glad that they are complimenting you now but now that's yeah. why i want to get into it because it's like saturated because queen it is it doesn't it doesn't so. serve the, the purpose of what it was supposed to be now like like a lot of guys be trying to use it to run game but you, we gonna get into that i guess but you know yeah, they be we, trying to do that just to most definitely. that's exactly what they're doing yeah most definitely all right hey all right let me pull up my zoom thing Where she at? Oh God, I gotta do it for my phone. And my phone, I don't like it for my phone. Hey. <laughs> Delay. <laughs> okay. I can see I see from my all I need is a fan. Okay, so I have to do it from my um my tablet. Like I can pause it, like see live stuff from my tablet. Um, but for my phone, it's gonna do the playback. So let me pull up. We're phone. back, y'all. We're back. Right, I'm right. For the show, I, I am too. Um, Miss Marie, Jenna Meta, I'm. I want you here. I want you. I can't see you coming or nothing. I did see where you say, "Hey." Eh, yeah. Hey, Marie. I didn't know that was you because your name is different on Facebook. But I clicked on your profile. I'm like, oh, I know Marie. All right, here I go. Hey, Quasha. Okay, I'm sorry for the delay because I'm, I'm, I'm doing my tablet, so I had to cut it on. Okay, so now all this stuff is going to be coming. <laughs> Can I see what I got now? Okay. All right, I'm going What? I'm, I'm getting old. I can't get it. I swear, Ash is like an old woman when it I comes am. to like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about this new technology. Like, I don't care about it. Like, you, oh, oh, baby, it's coming. You got, you got to be like, F this too. You, it's coming. It's not that hard. It's, it is. You know how many devices I, damn it, I got That's a not a lot. Courtney, one, two, three, four, five. I got five devices over here, baby. And all of them ain't even hooked up yet. And you should understand how to use them if you use them. All right. <laughs> Honestly, I'm hiring a, a videographer. I'm not going to lie to you. The upgrade, everything. I got a lot going on behind the scenes. All right. So, all right. So, hello, Marie. I want you here. I want you in one of these squares. Hi, <laughs> Quasha. Uh, I would like for you to be in one of these squares. Uh, okay. So, all right. Let me pull up the questions. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming back to episode four of the I've Noticed podcast. Uh, we are missing Miss Michelle. <laughs> uh, we have no idea where she is, but she should be calling in. Now she's about to be the Beyonce. Like she's calling in. <laughs> she's calling in now, you know. Um, but uh, as always, uh, like my business page the Ashley Yummy Tummy uh Facebook page the Yummy Tummy YouTube page and subscribe to it because that's why I be uploading the videos the full videos and then breaking them down into like the questions so just in case you got ADD you can't sit here and listen to the whole thing or watch the whole thing at one time I break it down into the questions you know also the Instagram Ashley Monique 843 you can go to the website Ashley Yummy Tummy and also um Miss Whitney here she has a blog as well uh, would you like to talk about that so they can be um sure. know about that as well? okay so i have a blog site it's called the polish gym and it's a blog site dedicated to helping young career professionals um become the best version of themselves in life and in their careers so it's a lot of motivational stuff on there some things may be kind of off topic but all in all it's a place where i put my thoughts on just things that we probably go through as uh, millennials, um, in your careers, all that good jazz is really good. Um, I trying to ease my way back into a, a blogging more, but definitely check it out. You can find my page. Uh, well, actually the blog site is www. Uh, 
uh, thepolishedgembrand.com. And you can follow us on social media, on Facebook, um, The Polished Gem, and on Instagram, The Polished Gem underscore. Right. Thanks, Ash. And Courtney, they can follow you for makeup tips at. <laughs> oh, I'm, I need to follow for that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she look like her? Doesn't she favor oh, her? Yeah, I, I would have never th- thought it into you. Got to lie with. She's been up for a while, but I've never heard no, it. But you know what it is? I feel like it's the, the hair. hair. Like your hair. Y- y'all have the same hair. So that's easier to like put resemblance to you. All you need to do is I not put it. on some shades. So I'm not gonna lie. I started to do a bang. I started to do a bang. Now the shades would do it. The shades. Oh yeah. Do. And I would be like, I'm like, do you know who this is? Let us in there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get into this. Um, hi everyone that is just joining. Um, as always, you're more than welcome to come up here. You hi, know, um, you're welcome to come up here too. Almost definitely. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, okay, so the first question is, and we also have a, a question that was done by Marie, but that's the second question. Um, I just refer, re, uh, reworded it, but I'm gonna say it how she originally gave it to us. And then I'm gonna, you know, but the first question is, and this is not picking on black women, but, <laughs> Why don't Black women accept criticism very well? Like somebody could tell us something honestly that could benefit us for the better, that could change our whole world, that can cause us from not having our car broke down on the side of the road, that can cause, that can help us like save more money. But we'll just be like, I got it. You know, like we just have, is it, where, where does that come from? Where does it come from? Where does it stem from? Like, why are we like that? And when I say we, I'm not just necessarily talking about individuals, right. but just you, we, we've seen these people. We know some well, of these people. I can honestly say that was me, where I could not take any type of criticism. I mean, come on, think about how I am right now. You can imagine me back in the day <laughs> with no life experience, not being able to take any criticism from nobody about nothing. <laughs> I'm sensitive. We know this, like, I'm very sensitive. So I used to be that way, but it wasn't for the reason of like what I think it might be for other. So what was you thinking it was? Me, I'm just sensitive. I don't like hearing judgment against me. That's why. That's that's, that's the thing that that confuses me. Like when people say judgment, um, I I don't know. Like because whenever you use the J word, people automatically like only God can judge me. You know, like they automatically get on defense, even though you're saying. Can you just pick up the paper, please? No littering sign. Only Josh can, God can tell me there's no littering. <laughs> like, yeah. like, what? It's just extra. So I have uh, you grown out of that. I would say, yeah, I've grown out of it because now, like, you know, I'm the why person. Like, like someone be like, you know, maybe you shouldn't do like this, okay, but why? Like, <laughs> tell me why so I can understand where you're coming from, type of thing. But back in the day, like I did, like when I say judgment, I didn't like anyone's opinion about me that I didn't agree with. That's just the plain, simple version of judgment that I have. That that was my definition. If that makes sense. Yeah, and then you still, because on previous episodes, you still, you make sure you don't remember when we talk about posting things. You make sure you don't post things because so people can say something about you. You're very particular about that. So you still on the like the fence of like no nah, I'm not with that at all yeah. because I don't like judgment <laughs> but I think I can accept it better now but I don't like judgment period okay okay um I think it's just I, I think so when I first read the question almost automatically I was just like now what I actually got to put that on black women <laughs> when I read it I was like no, I mean, because I feel like, you know, I feel like a lot of the time, like society in general puts a lot of things on black women. It's almost like they have to keep us in a box. So it's mm-hmm. like, we're going to we're gonna label them and we're going to label them angry. We're going to label them complicated. We're going to label them. They don't know how to take cons- constructive criticism. You know, they're, 
they're loud, they're this and they're that. So I feel like, you know, although there are some, there, tr there is truth to stereotypes, I just feel like sometimes like they give us so many labels, you know, to have. But when it comes to the whole, um, you know, not being able to take constructive criticism, um, I don't, I don't think black women have a problem of uh, taking constructive criticism. Um, I think we have a problem when we feel like people are just trying to talk to us in a way that we don't know something or we are oblivious to something or like we just can't handle it or can't do it. You know like what I mean? Like, yeah, like it's almost like you're trying to like you're trying to talk to me like I don't know what I'm saying or don't know what I'm talking about type of thing. I don't think we take too kindly to that because I just think like, you know, just just for, you know, being in the black community, I just think just being women, period, you know, it's hard because it's like people are auto automatically are going to think you don't know how to do something just because you're a woman or yeah, you don't that, know certain yeah. things just because you're a woman. And so times it's just like it can be like you come off like defensive about it because just like somebody I mean nine times out of ten maybe something you know you're talking about something with a car and you know you might be talking he'll, he or whoever may be talking to the woman and they'll try to talk to her like okay well maybe she don't really know about cars but then if she does then a woman is probably going to come off as if she can't take constructive criticism or she can't take you know them saying xyz but it's like I already know it so instead of you talking to me as if I don't know if you just ask me like hey do you you know did you know about this or you know xyz I think it's just all in how you approach it I don't think we're just standoffish or can't take critiques just for no reason I just feel like if we feel like you're saying whatever in our best interest we'll listen um at least that's been my experience as a black woman and my experience with the black women around me um I don't really know anybody that's just like not taking crit constructive criticism, you know, just be just because. And okay. it depends on who it's coming from, too. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was about to get on that. So, Marie, you said we have been programmed. Can you explain that a little bit more while we go into a question? She said, I think it took me getting with my fiance to start working on that because before you couldn't tell me nothing. And I think th what you said, Whitney, I think that's when it really hits us. Like when we yeah. are in a relationship with someone. Uh, right. you know your partner and then they'd be like why are you not listening <laughs> and like it could be something like you know or either maybe you should but you just been living your life like um I personal experience um I I recently said how can I go 30 like basically 34 years with like being um being like oh you got to do this you got to be independent you got to be self sufficient you can't yeah. depend on no man you got to block you right, know but right. then when you meet a guy he's like relax calm down I yes, got it and exactly. I'm like yeah. no I got it. you know so it, it's it's so hard like when you've been I doing something for so long and then somebody your partner or your spouse comes along and then they be like you don't have to work as hard you don't have to do that but then yeah be more feminine and that that word kind of i'm like <laughs> are you okay Grady? i'm fine it's like it's like be more feminine i'm like the fuck i look like a stud or something like what's going on like why would you say that yeah and it's because of i wish i wish kiki was here because she loved to be like the what manish you know word yeah, or whatever that hey, word so, i hate you're right. And so I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> so because um I can pay my bills, I, I'm not pressed to have you around me. Um, I'm not, you know, when you say something, I don't, I'm not, it's not like every time you say something, I have a comeback, you know. But yeah. it's just like they just want you to be your partner wants you to be more feminine. And I'm like, do you think it's because it might be, I'm not saying it is, but do you think it might be because there's this this um stigma almost that they're supposed to, like we're all supposed to be like strong black women and you know the backbone of everything do you think maybe 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 there's like a majority of black women who don't like getting uh criticism like that because it's almost like that is being questioned in a way or no? honestly the strong black women oh, I, it's, that is such a, a tricky thing because i don't think we according to men that i've been talk, conversing with they're like hush kiki they're like uh they're like we're not supposed to be strong independent women like all this education we got 
all this 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 money put up and and I'll, I'll have a, a, a child later on in life I'm focused on my career that's not what they want they just want us to like look good do other things good cook good and have the house clean and low-key I'm like oh no but now I think I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to turn in the car and I might be like, oh, okay. <laughs> because it is a lot. It's a lot. But I think the strong independent woman thing happened by accident. Meaning like, and here I go. I just about to start some shit. Oh, Lord. Because the black man wasn't there. He was gone. He was locked up. He was. <laughs> oh, my gosh, <laughs> Ashley. You're definitely about to start some mess on here. <laughs> realistically i think that's what it, because like if you think about it the woman ha- wouldn't have to be so strong if it was a two-parent home uh i mean because typically she's doing it because she has kids you know she gotta feed her kids she gotta take care of herself and all this other stuff like i mean if, i think if you poll women now people who are like phds master degrees like i think those women would probably be like I, I don't really I, I just want a family <laughs> like I don't yeah. think it's all what it's cracked up to be anymore to be quite honest yeah, it's just it's just so much that really goes on to like like of defining like how we got to this point like how we got to be labeled strong you know independent black and women. independent and like you said like some I'm of like those things is because number. yeah like some of those things is because we have to but I also believe like honestly like Black women are just like awesome. Like, of course. There's, you're not like we're we're a different type of 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 woman. Like, you're not gonna get. You might get some. I mean, not saying that you know. I understand. You know, I feel like just saying like black women are strong is really putting a lot on us when we say that. But at the end of the day, I feel like black women as a whole, like we are strong. Not in a sense that you know give us all the pain and we'll take it and we can come out on top. But I just feel like in general, like we can make something happen out of nothing like we can we can take we can take something from point a and take it to z and we can make it flip double triple all this other stuff and people like underestimate us so much and that's really like that's really like our secret power though like they underestimate Uh. not just women but really black women underestimate us so much and it's like every time they underestimate us we always come in and save the day we always got to clean up you know everybody's black women is black women that when it's time to show up black women are always the first front line, line, front in line. The crowd. and you know and it's crazy because we will never get the first recognition they'll have to go through everybody else and then they'll be like oh yeah this black woman did that when all along it was us the whole time Right. That's how I be so, with some guys. I'd be like, "Where your mom at? Where, where, where your sister at?" Because like yeah. they talk so much cash shit about black women. I'd be like, "Where your where your mom at?" Yes, like I mean, black women is it, and that's that's just my thing. Like, and I feel like even as like when you're going in a relationship, it takes. It, it really does take a certain type of, of man to date a black woman. And, you know, mm-hmm. I understand that everybody's experiences are different. You know, us is black. I mean, we come from different backgrounds, but it's just like a, a certain level that you have to have when dealing with a black woman. You know, especially when if, if you're going into those quote unquote stereotypes of being strong and independent, you know, I feel like a black woman, you can be strong and independent and still keep your femininity. It doesn't have to be like, mm-hmm. Being strong and independent doesn't necessarily mean you're the type of woman that's saying, oh, no, I don't need a man. I can do it all by myself. It's just letting you know that, no, I don't depend on you, but you can still treat me like you're a partner. You still treat me like the woman that I am. But you should be confident or or feel comfortable about that as a man, knowing that, you know, if something happened and you in a situation like I can depend on my spouse, not that like you could say, oh, I'm the man or something happened like I don't know what we gonna right. do because she can't do nothing you know what I mean like you're not gonna get too many black women like that even if the woman is not working look, a black woman is gonna make something shake if you leave her high look, or, se- look uh, selling dinners uh braiding hair anything. babysitting like she's okay. gonna get the bills she's so gonna come out with her for jobs like that is something you do not even have to worry about something is gonna shake <laughs> like, right. I, honestly like I know the little phrase like little cliche thing or whatever is like um I want guys be like I want to ride or die like honestly I think that's just in a black woman's DNA like I mean I just it's just 
it you really know? is like it really the ride or die and it's just like it's just it's just that some people take advantage of it you know oh, that's oh, no, they they know. Know. Definitely like, you have y'all seen that video of them little boys and it's like three little boys and the oldest one like they young right and he goes i'll die for you ma <laughs> oh yeah i saw that <laughs> oh, I I see a, a, twi- a set of twins or triplets or something right. like that and he was like die yeah. He knew at a young age that ain't for him. (laughs) Right. Like I I think but the 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 term like ride or die is always like used negatively, like you know, in some criminal activity, Bonnie and Clyde type stuff. But like when I say uh it's like in our DNA, it's just like you maybe that's why they kind of do treat us a certain type of way, like because they know we not gonna go nowhere like we're gonna try to fight and, and make it work and do what we need to do you know but um but like r kelly say when a woman's fed up that's when we out there you know we because we don't went through so much you yeah. know for us to get to that breaking point and whatnot um i hear you with and me. we are feminine too i hate when people try to make it seem like we're not feminine like because of the, the traditional which I didn't get guys our age talking about some traditional stuff. Like, what are, you don't even and they know don't even about. know about traditional stuff. Thank they only you. they only pick and pull apart like the things they want to stay traditional to. Like they want to stay traditional when it comes to okay, yes, I want a woman to stick by me. I want them to have my kids. I want them to cook, clean, and all these other things. But when it comes to like the things you're supposed to do as a man, especially you know, it's it's a thousand ways we can go with it but especially when it comes to taking care of the household and bills when you really oh, start yeah. talking about money to men that's oh, when God. they start trying to pull back like don't pull back now. I, need a you said, I need that don't don't <laughs> you that's said what... you wanted traditional and with no 50 50 splitting going on traditional the no. man was taking care of the bills the woman was taking care of the kids in the house and that's the way it was that was but it now, yeah, now when you start talking about roles as far as, you know, paying for bills, I mean, uh, taking care of the bills and stuff, you know, now they want to back up like, okay, now I want you to cook clean, but now we got to go 50-50 on the yeah, bills. 50-50. You want to equal yeah. rights, right? right. <laughs> and, look, at one point, I was like, who's the, who, who fought for us to have equal rights? Because I probably want to stay home right now, you know. Well, I, I want to I I vote. There's some rights I, I would want to vote. And, you know, um, you know, like, honestly, like, one of the things that I talk about now, like speaking with the femininity and like, you know, being yeah. a lady and a woman and stuff, because I have I, like being transparent, I've had guys, you know, uh, say things to me that were kind of like hurtful, you know, yeah. but it, crushed, it made me be like, should I not have businesses? Should I not do this? Should I just go ahead and have kids? Should I just like, like try to yeah. mind fuck me into yeah. what they want I me to you, do, Ashley. I you know? feel you, yeah. And so I'm like, oh, and, and then when I start feeling like that, I'm like, oh, I don't like this feeling. And I, you know, I talk to them, you know, but most guys don't know how to communicate, you know. So I just be like, this ain't gonna work, you know. Um, because if anything, I want a man that's gonna come and add on, not add on no stress, not add on no baggage, but be like, because my my love, I think we did we talk about love language yet? No, we, I don't think we did. Think we did. Maybe okay, well, my. Did. Yeah, we did okay. like way in the beginning, but oh, like okay. we touched okay. on it. We didn't really talk about it, talk about it. Okay, well, my love language, love language is acts of service. Like I, what I need you to, without me even having to say it, like see what I, what needs done, and then you just do it. That's one less thing off of me, you know. But um, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I just don't like when guys downplay it and make it seem like I'm not like a girl, girl. You know, a, a, I don't want to be a girly girl. I know that's not me. I know that's not me. But I'm a businesswoman. And when guys start talking about stuff, they be like, oh, once you start talking about money and finances, I'm a gold digger. If I was a gold digger, I would not yeah. be talking to you. And you stay with your mama. Right. And you're making $10 an hour. No offense to people who stay with their mom and make ten dollars an hour, but I'm just saying, if I was a gold digger, my standards would be a little bit higher. That's all I'm saying. So I hate that. So when you start talking about finances with men, they will get so upset. Yeah, they really do. That and they get that's that's the one thing like they go to like when you when they when you start talking about the money part, like they'll try to like beat you down to like you don't even deserve two pennies to rub together like you just gotta just take 
whatever. And it's just like, and the other side of it too, I'm just like, you know, I understand people who like debating and they like talking about these type of things. But my thing is like, you know, you got to know your place. Like if you know you're not the type of guy, every, every guy is not going to be the type of guy that wants to take care of all the bills in the house. That's fine. Find you somebody, who, find a mate who wants the same things and the same dynamics in a relationship that you want. But don't say, oh, you saw another man that's taking care of all the bills while his woman is staying home and doing whatever. Don't look down on what they're doing. Like that's just something right. that works for them. Like find right, whatever right. works for you. That's not saying every guy has to be the one that's paying all the bills. Some some women don't want that. Some women feel like, okay, no, I got to pay for something because you're going to think you own something if you pay for it. And they do. And yeah. they do. I don't care yeah. what they say. And they do. Yeah. Some women are going to even gonna want you to take care of it so it's just like you really just have to find whatever works for you but that doesn't necessarily say you know i don't know about the language on here but that don't necessarily mean you got to shit on what somebody else doing just because it's not what you would do you know what i mean yeah so. and it, and people live their lives so differently like everybody household is like different you know yeah. and then but when you come together it's like a little you're like what y'all do oh, okay that works for y'all well i've never heard of that but great great and that's why and that's why too ashley like that's why it's also good like your experiences i think i say this before but your experiences are going to be different depending Mm -hmm. on what you have around you so it's just like for me i have a lot of 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 you know beautiful strong black women women from all like walks of life and so like my idea when it comes to like relationships and things may be different than somebody who may not even have the exposure to people being in a monogamous relationship. They're right. not used to somebody seeing you somebody so in a right. healthy relationship. They're not used to seeing the guy cater to the woman. They're not used to seeing a woman take care of a man. They're not used to seeing those things. So when you start talking about them, it seems foreign to them. Like, what? Don't nobody do that. Women don't do that. And you're just I thinking like, that. yes, women do that. Like that. Or the other side of it, you're just like, oh, men don't do that. Men don't know how to do this. And it's just mm-hmm. like, um, yeah, I know a, a good bit of men who do. So it's just your experiences and the people right. around you really shape your perspective. So if you don't really have the people around you or in your circle or know somebody like your idea of what a relationship is, is going to be so different than the next person. You are so right. Because like I said, I'm in my little dating phase or whatever. And when I meet guys, men who parents are still together, I said, I get, listen, I, I'd be like, fuck him. I, I'd be like, focus on his parents. I'd be like, so how long they been together? How old are you? Like, cause I'm, cause I don't have people around me that has been married for like a long time. Right, like, yeah. And then I told you if they're married, they're like black people divorced, which I know y'all was like, what is black people divorced? Yeah. <laughs> well, for my culture from around me, it's where they're still married. He got his girlfriend. She got her boyfriend, but they still legally married. They're not getting yeah. a divorce because she wanted social security because she say he ain't shit until he die anyway, you know. Like, that's yeah. how I, the Black women that I know around, you know. But So I'm always fascinated by, um, I know this is going to sound so crazy. I'd be so fascinated by Black men that come from two-parent households because I'm like, how was it? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. I'm serious. I, I, I get you, Ashley. Yeah. I, I like, I and it's really crazy. Know. Yeah, and not even just like the like, like another guy, but like to me, it was that way, like from just people in general coming from like, so I was raised by my grandparents, you know, I had both of them, my grandma and my grandpa, but mm-hmm. you know, it's different when it's your actual parent. parents. And so right. even when I'm like, even when I was in school, I'm like, dang, like I was just like watching, it's like, oh, dang, you know, their parents actually come to like these meetings. Like they have people actually coming in with their parents coming to watch their games and stuff and you know <laughs> helping so- them like helping them with homework and stuff. I'm just like, I do this by myself. Like y'all have people actually helping y'all do homework. Just, what? Courtney, what's your experience? Like, is this like foreign to you? Single parent household. Huh? I was in a single parent household. But a I'm saying, but when she's talking about like homework and stuff, like so your or was your mom like was she like the busy single mom or was she like she had oh, time yeah. for y'all? Yeah. I mean think about it she had time but she was busy i mean she's military like she's she's busy oh, um that's like, lovely but i was still elementary school i had to go to after school program you know but then she would pick me up from there instead of so yeah she get work. so she was busy but i mean so was my dad so like i was with her most of the time like i guess it's not so foreign to me because my parents are both actively in my life still i know that's not the okay. case only when parents yeah. separate or you know get a divorce right when they're young. but my experience i guess is different from a lot 
a lot of people because mine was as normal as it could be without living in the same household. So maybe that's why I'm just like, I've seen it. You know what I mean? Like I've seen it. So they were great co-parents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's one. That's another, that's a whole nother topic. But in order for us to talk about that, we need parents up here because I already know they're going to tear into my ass about it. But luckily- uh uh-uh, child, we don't need nobody parents up here. <laughs> no, I mean like, I mean like, People who like mom and dads, like who are who who are co parents and like currently. Oh, okay, like, okay, yeah. Age that's like that does oh, have I a see, positive. I see. I was co- about to yeah. Say, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, basically wrapping it up. Uh, the question was, uh, why don't black women accept criticism? Well, I think we all agree that we do, but it's just basically how you present it. It's all about your delivery, like the person who's delivering the message, in order for us to receive it. You know, if you come in positively then we'll accept it positively but you come in negatively you know what's gonna happen <laughs> you know all right so let's move on to the second question um which was okay would you allow a man to teach you to become the woman he needs versus the woman you want to be okay so now that was marie's question but this is how she uh she she phrased it to me she said, why don't women care slash value themselves enough to leave? Oh, why do I keep reading that question? That's the, <laughs> I, this the second time I do that. Maybe that's the question you, we should do on the future episode since you keep reading. But I'm not ready for that. You know, I've been trying to do these things like a mixtape. Like it got a oh, flow. <laughs> Hello, wait a minute. What, what is that question? Okay, so that question Okay, she said, is it hard for a man to properly teach or correct a woman's wrongdoings respectfully? That's what she said. And so the question that I, how I did it, I said, how I worded it was, would you allow a man to teach you to become a woman, teach you to become the woman that he needs versus the woman you want to be? Because a lot of times um, when you go into these new relationships, um, you go in as yourself, you know, and you kind of don't want change. Mo- I guess some people, some women. So I don't know. I don't know how. Um, it depends. It depends. Like it depends. I feel like the two were kind of different, though. What I feel you, like okay. what I feel like what Marie was asking was probably kind of different than the way that you reworded it. It seems like a little different. Could you read read her question again? Okay, she said. Is it hard for a man to properly teach or correct a woman's wrongdoing respectfully? Like, I, I would need an example, like. Right, I think she meant, what it sounds like is that she meant it in a way like if the woman had done something disrespectful and the man wanted to check her for that. Is oh, it, okay. Is that hard? That's what, I, that's what I heard it as. And then the question that you're asking is like, can you, can you love the, like, it sounds like you're saying, yeah, like, can you let a man teach you to love him the way he needs to be loved, right? Than the way you want to love him. See, Marie, this is why you need to be up here. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be up here. Yeah. So it. So she did confirm that it is different, and I think, like, even from the way that she uh, asked the question, um, again, going back to the whole labels and stereotype thing, right? I think it's hard for anybody to be like somebody correcting you on something that you don't feel like you're in the wrong for of course you may you know not want that person <laughs> she's talking about don't be reworked <laughs> <laughs> you know of course you're not you may not like like the way that a person is like chastising you for your wrong right. doing or saying like no like or like she said like checking you or putting you in your place like most people ain't gonna go for that and again you know for a long time I mean women kind of used to you know somebody always feeling like they got to put them in their place so it's just like now that we have more freedom now that we are able to express ourselves now that it's been acceptable for us to be in different positions of authority and things so it's just like now that we have that I feel like now it's just like okay I don't know if it's anybody else but it's just I feel like it's like now it's just like in my, our, some people's mind, some women's mind, it's just like, okay, we ain't going back there. Like, you know, you ain't going to be correcting me and checking me no more. Like, you know, I, you know, we pass, we pass that. Like you can, you know, they just don't want, they just don't want the correction. But, you know, I just, again, it just goes by, you know, what type of relationship you have with your partner. Like if it's coming from a place of love, I feel like 
is going to be, it may not be fully welcome, but you're going to appreciate them like, you know, telling you like you were wrong or, you know, you need to do X, Y, Z, or that wasn't the right way to handle this. Or, you know, whenever you said this or did this, you know, this was the type of effect it gave. I just feel like if you're coming out of a place of love um, and they understand that you're, you're doing whatever as in their best interest, it's going to be taken a different way versus if they know you're just trying to put them down or you just trying to, you know, come at them. Of course, again, with anybody, not just black women, because Again, everybody's trying to get this whole thing that black women are complicated and we can't take, you know, criticism and we're hard to get along with, you know, just people in general, like if you're coming out coming from a place of love, even if initially the other person doesn't realize you are, they're going to appreciate it, even if they don't take it right then they'll still appreciate it but they feel like you come in like in a place of being negative, and you just trying to, you know, you just trying to like tell them they're doing something wrong, then you that's not gonna work, you know it's not. I totally agree. Let me see. I'm about to try something, y'all. Uh, copy. Okay, so I'm about to see if I can post in the... Um, for those of you who are watching and like, Marie, this is really for you. <laughs> um, I'm about to put, put in like the the phone number to dial in and uh, the passcode to type in in the ID or whatever um, for this mm -hmm. meeting. So you guys, so for whoever to uh, come in, you guys can like come in and share like your opinion. Um, if you choose to, let me see, let me do it real quick. What do you think about it? Um, Passcode to type in in the ID or whatever. Okay, we're going to have to do that um, real quick. Meeting, so you guys, so <laughs> to, uh, come in, you guys can like come in and share like your opinion. Um, choose to. Let me see. We're answering the question that she asked about, right? Yes. yes. Passcode to type Hold in I can reread it to you. Hold on. Whatever. We're going to have to do that. Zoom phone you guys like to share like your opinion. Um, we're answering the question that she asked about, right? Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I need to play back. All right. Um, we're answering the question that she asked about, right? Okay, let me see. Okay, so I put the Zoom phone number in. For those of you who would like to dial in, I, I put the Zoom phone number in and I actually kind of test it out. Marie, test it out. Do somebody yeah, test it out. Yeah, I was just about to say, if yeah, somebody test, test it out, out that would um, be good. So that way she can kind of explain her question because I think I got it, but you know, just in case she had like a little more. Time. Right, right. Um, But I'll reread it, Um, Courtney. Uh, she said... I got so many notes. Okay, she said, is it hard for a man to properly teach or correct a woman's wrongdoing respectfully? So I guess not to be so hard on her, like mm -hmm, uplift her instead of like beating her down if she does something wrong. Well, I mean, that's just, that just like, like you said, it just goes with the delivery of it. Um, See, Marie might be coming from, she might be giving an example of what she's saying. Yeah, I didn't like, know. I was, yeah, because it, it doesn't. It does, in Marie, do Because it doesn't seem like, you know, to me, I mean, if you're, it, it, it will only be hard for him to correct her wrongdoing if she's not used to somebody correcting her. Or like I said, if it's not coming from a place where the person is genuine man. or whatever yeah. like if you're doing it respectfully then it shouldn't be a reason for the correction to be taken offensively. Right. the only way i see that being taken is if like you said she doesn't take criticism or if there's like no communication whatsoever who is this like, who is oh, this might be marie i hope it it's still connecting audio i doubt it she ain't gonna do it note nine is connecting who is this this is a mystery person who is this Ooh. Okay, they're connected. Boom. Here we go. <laughs> Y'all even hey, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my we're so happy to have you. Okay, so oh my okay. God. <laughs> okay, so let us know what's 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 good. Let's do it. What is it? Oh Jesus, this girl here. Yeah. I'm y'all know I'm at work, right? <laughs> oh Lord. Oh, don't, don't, try <laughs> we, don't try we ain't trying to get Okay, started. go go through your go okay, through your fine, question, uh, go through your Okay, we read it back quick. to me. 
Okay, you said, is it hard for a man to properly teach or correct a woman's wrongdoing respectfully? Right. So what, 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 what you think? What you think about it? It depends on who you're dealing with to me and how they come the, the, their delivery. Right. Because if you your message may be A1, but if your delivery is not the correct way, it's not going to reach that person. So delivery has a whole lot to do with that. Okay. And also, I think also, but, like, if you know your person, like, if you know the person you're dealing with, you should already yeah. know how to come to them. But you know, okay, but think about this, because I was listening at y'all earlier when y'all was talking about the, like, Black women syndrome, always angry, always aggressive, that type thing. Because let's just face it, nowadays, when you try to talk to a, no, a Black female, I'm not going to say Black woman, because there's there's levels to that. So, in my opinion, <laughs> okay, there are levels. There's, there's levels to being a female, a woman, a lady. There's levels in my okay. opinion. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, yeah. Now. <laughs> so, um, with that being said, because we already looked at as angry, as mm -hmm. you know, the stereotypes. Yeah, the stereotypes. Because if you got a deeper voice, you you know you combating. Yeah. I need you to hush. That, that type of thing. So, yeah. And, and, and like, you don't let them finish. They say you over talk them and, you know. Oh, don't never listen. You're hard headed. <laughs> don't you <laughs> hate that? Down. Oh, my gosh. I hate that. To so a certain much. extent, because you got to learn how to be self, hold yourself accountable for yourself as well. So, like, I, I, sometimes a lot of black like, women don't like that. Be held accountable I, for that. Some guys, I just say, well, what you want me to do? <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I, I get like, like I feel like that small way. I'm like, well, what you want me to? I don't know what to. Is yeah. it? Can I speak now? Like, and then they go, oh, now you're trying to be funny. Like I had somebody do that today. <laughs> I was like, he said, they, you, you're over talking me. Over first off, I ain't gonna go there. But I was like, can I speak now? And then that's when he was like, oh, you're trying to be funny or whatever. You know, this the nigga they ain't had no teeth. This guy right here getting on my nerves. Oh, I'm talking Lord. about catfishing too. <laughs> You see my story with me? When you, get time, when you get time, go look at my story. Oh, gosh. I, I got catfished. But, um, Thank you for explaining that, Marie. I think we got welcome. on the same page finally. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let us keep you from your job now, girl, because you know people be tripping. <laughs> oh, no. Mine ain't like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, all right. So we will see you Sunday. Okay. Next Sunday. On okay, here. <laughs> On here. <laughs> Yay. Oh, God. All right, Marie. Okay, All right, All right bye. 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 Okay. Oh, no, I ain't gonna say. Did she hang up? Okay, let me see. Like, <laughs> okay, let me see. Um, I can make posts from here. We're we learning on here, y'all. We're learning on here. <laughs> Right. I actually, the whole, what did I do? I switched my view. Hello. Well, now that we got okay. clarification, but yeah, it's basically the delivery of delivery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I know I shut down if I don't like your delivery or something. So I think this is a lesson for guys. Um, I hope the men that are watching, basically we're willing to work with you. Just watch how you talk to us. Like, just just be softer. We are women. So we can't, you don't talk to us like you're talking to your homeboy or your uncle, you know. Just tone it down a little bit. And basically, we will do what you want us to do. It's the delivery, you know. Okay, well, most of us will do. Because the way you just did that with me, you was like. <laughs> no, you was like, we'll do what you want. Hold on uh, now. Well, it depends on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, well, nine times out of ten, we're gonna do it anyway to save our relationship. True, I mean, true, depending true. on depending on yeah, what I it is, you. you know. So we okay. I got you. So let's go to question three, which is: Does being called a BBQ, beautiful black queen, does that excite you or upset you, and why? Oh gosh. Okay. So for me. It doesn't upset me. Like it only upsets me when I know you're the type of guy. So when I hear somebody call somebody um, queen or black queen, to me, that's you're showing them like the highest respect. That means you respect me. Like you think highly of me. 
So if I know you're the type of man that really doesn't respect women, if you call me a, a, a queen or a black queen or whatever you say, like I'm really gonna, that's when it irritates me. If I really know the type of guy you are and you sitting here trying to talk about some hey queen, black queen, like nah, you don't even respect women like that. So don't even have that in your vocabulary. <laughs> But when it comes from somebody who I know like loves black women and respects them highly, like I love it then because it's just like, mm -hmm. okay, like it I can get better. with that. Yeah. yeah, I can get with that. But these men out here that just throwing a queen around and stuff like that, just to, you know, act like they have this high regard for women. Like I don't like that because it's like I already know you the player type. You don't really respect women like that. So just stick to the person's name or whatever little other words you can bay, hun, love, all that other stuff. But don't say queen. Like, if you don't really know nothing about queenship or none of that other stuff or queen, any of that, don't even use it. Like, just don't use it. Right. Courtney, how do you feel about it? Well, when we, we had touched on this before when you and me were talking about it on the chat or whatever, it's, it's basically what she said. It all depends on who it's coming from. Yeah. I have to know, like, I don't like it when strangers, like, I was, when I was on uh, my lunch break at the clinic one day. I went to the gas station that had the subway <laughs> attached. There was a black man. He got out the car behind me in the gas station while I was coming back to from the subway to my car. He goes, beautiful black queen, beautiful black queen. And I'm just like, thanks. <laughs> I'm like, you don't, you don't know nothing about me. You don't know nothing about me. You're just saying it because it, it sounds trendy and you think, you know what I mean? It's almost like... Yeah. It's just, it's just to me, it's, it depends. Like you, like you were saying, it depends on who it is. Now, if I'm dating somebody and they haven't said it before, I'm like, you know, like three months in, four months in, they're like, you my queen. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, <laughs> you know, but just, <laughs> you're just, receiving yeah. it differently, and you know, you're exactly. like genuine about it. Exactly. So it like, yeah, it just, yeah. It depends mostly too, I was gonna say like mostly too, like. Just to be honest, a lot of the, the guys that always like say like black queen to me or just call me queen in general, they all kind of come from like the same group I would categorize them as. Like they all come yeah. from the conscious woke oh, okay. guys. So they so are like, they are it's it's authentic. Yes, yeah. Okay. So like it's it's something behind the black queen. It ain't just like them just calling you like they they really like respect black women and love them. So it's like it's mostly that group of guys that I get. And usually when it's not coming from somebody that I would put in that category, to me it kind of seems like, oh no, I gotta look and see if like you mean this or you just trying to just trying to get some cool points by calling me queen. Like, right. You know? okay. I um I think it's uh that category, those people who who know the meaning and, and use it uh the way it's supposed to be used. Um, I I do think that a lot of men, it's like it's overrated. Like now it doesn't when you hear somebody say it, like it doesn't affect you as much. It doesn't it doesn't like do anything to you, you know? Because um I I get called it, you know um I I don't know I just. I don't know if I like it anymore. Like it's not, it doesn't hold no weight anymore. Cause what, everybody queen? is saying it. Like what, I'd queen? be like, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, everybody is saying it. Like they it's like it, it's not doing nothing for me. Yeah. Trendy. Yeah, me. But it look, what if what if people say it's the for me? Like yeah, it ain't doing yeah. that for me. It ain't doing that for me, like not no more. Like at first you'd be like, okay, okay, king, <laughs> you know. Now right. it's just like now honestly I play with it. Like because when like you said with guys who are just like womanizers or who don't respect yeah. women and stuff, you know, they just you know, I they be like, okay, queen. I'd be like, okay, Burger King, okay, you know, <laughs> like you no, know, because I'm just saying, like, you know, but um, but yeah, I if it comes from the right person, and then like what Courtney was saying, like if if you're in a relationship, then I think it it makes a difference. Like I let me earn that title just versus you just like giving it to me, you know, because it's the, like you said, the trendy thing, or you just hear other people saying it or whatnot. Um, but I do, I don't need it. Like I'm not big on titles. Like Courtney and Keisha know that I'm not really big on titles. So I don't need that, but I know the qualities and the characteristics that I already possess. Like I know, you know, and then also everybody ain't no queen. Like, I mean, yeah. realistically, like somebody got to be 
a princess. Somebody got this. You know, there's love. Like what Marie was saying, gentlemen was saying, there's levels. So I do want to talk about that. Like there are levels to yeah. getting to that throne. Like first off, you're not a queen if you don't have a king. In order for, I mean. Okay. Okay. I can't. So, I, can, I mean, where you going with that? <laughs> yeah. Like so, everybody. Like, the, the you I gotta have the king in order to be a queen. You know. <laughs> So I, I already know I ain't no queen because I'm single. You know? you I'm said not that yeah. the other day when I was like low key. I kind of like being called a princess more than a queen. Yeah, yeah, you, like, yeah. Look cute. yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah, still, you know, yeah. I'm still in training. I'm still queen in training. You know, I still got my training wheels on. You know, but uh, you know, and I'm not pressed for all that responsibility as a queen. Right. <laughs> because I can run a country doesn't mean I want to. You know, right? You know, um, <laughs> you know. Sometimes you're not just gonna be a duchess. Hey, I saw this on social media too. It was because I think they had posted it on the shade shade room, but it kind of go back to Ashley was saying like now it's just so trendy. Um, mm -hmm. Tristan, what's his last name? Chloe, baby daddy. Tristan Tom Thomas. Tom. Oh yeah, yeah, the the basketball player. The basketball player. Yeah, he had she had made a post on Instagram or whatever, and he commented. He was like, "My queen," and I'm just like, first of all, oh, y'all, yeah. none of y'all guys started. Y'all, y'all wasn't. Queens have been around that. for forever. Nobody thought about calling anybody a queen until we started saying black queen, black king, and all this other stuff. Now people, I mean, like we don't own the word, but ain't nobody was thinking about calling people no black queen or black right. king. So it's it's like he had got a lot of flack about it whenever he had posted under her picture and he was like his queen like everybody was just coming for him like she ain't even no queen <laughs> let me ask you this uh do you think it would have been appropriate if he would have said that to his daughter like can he say that to his daughter because i think a lot of people kind of associate it with like race and stuff too now they do they do so, yeah. so but you so technically even though his daughter is you know black and i think she is white because because yeah, they she's say Armen she's Armenian, the Kardashian. Well, well whatever well, that is. Not her, whatever because that that's is. not their daddy. That's not oh, her true. daddy. We're still trying to true. figure out who her daddy is, which they say is. You're Putin. right about that. Yeah. You're right about so that. So the other ones are Armenian, half Armenian, but she's just white and we don't know what it is. You know? yeah, until, yeah, until her true. mama ready to, to write the story of really who her daddy is. You know? yeah. But I'm sure she know. I'm sure she know. But, uh, but so is it appropriate for him to call his daughter like that because she is? technically black you know or she just be a princess? i mean I, I feel like he will you know i feel like a lot of the celebrities although they are like if they're black and they're with somebody who's like of another race like they're they're still gonna call their or child as if they were you know they're gonna still say black queen or you know you're this and you're that and i and i get it but at the same time they're they're mixed and so I feel like that's it's to me it just seems a little different, you know, just saying, you know, she is it horrible that when we think of mixed kids, I kind of go by the brown paper bag rule. Like <laughs> if they're a certain um, color, I would see yeah. them like I, I identify them more as being black because that's how they're seen. You know, what oh, I mean? because of their shade, like their time. Right. Yeah. right. Because even yeah, though somebody mixed, darker, they could get away with that. Like if I mean you know, if somebody like is is mixed, but they're on the darker side, like you saying, like even just referencing them just as black or whatever, like that's gonna be like you're not even gonna think about that. If, but it's somebody who's lighter, and you gotta like you gotta have to tell me that you got a black daddy or black mom. Right. You know, you know, you know who who uh, a famous person? He's a rapper who go through that uh, logic. So compare logic to J Cole. Like honestly, I did not even know oh, J Cole was yeah. biracial. I didn't know really? I didn't, exactly. I did not know that. It's how yeah. people perceive you. Because you so, can so, okay. but they go let's do, off by what they see. So if let's do three you. artists. Let's do okay. We got Logic going by the paper bag. You got yeah. Logic, who is more fair skin. You got J Cole, who's high yellow, and then you got uh, Drake. I could tell Drake mixed with someone. You know, I would have said a little Hispanic, but he's black. You know? mm, I don't know. We need no. We need somebody else because they um Drake Drake. He all right, but we need somebody who's like more. But, but you kind of see what I'm saying, like Drake yeah, has. Like saying, compared, compared to the J Cole, Drake has a better grade of hair, and he's a little. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, oh, well, hold on. Wait a minute. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Logic, you said, Drake. Yeah, hold on, Ashley. You said Drake has a better grade of hair. Yeah, compared yeah. to J Cole. <laughs> 
took care of the J. Cole? I think uh, so. Especially I now, J. Cole. I wasn't expecting that. That just kind of caught me off guard when you were talking about his great hair. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Cause I, I want to switch one. I want to say Logic, Drake, then J. Cole. Because J. Cole, yeah, I would say, he would be more yeah. like my cousin. Like, I can see him yeah. at the cookout. If, like, I can't I didn't see know him. J. Cole was mixed until you said it. If I look at J. Cole, I like, see him right like him. Like, just now? You didn't like, know? just now. Oh, my girl. Oh, wow. I know I, just found J. Cole out a I like J. Cole, but I didn't yeah. know that he mixed. If you didn't tell me that, I would have never thought that. I just would have thought he was a light-skinned black man. His, I, well, how I found out was I had to rewind a song. And I was like, what did he say? Yeah, he says it in his music and stuff. And I was like, ain't no way. Enter. And I'd be down. I yeah, see, J. Cole, he can get away with a lot more stuff than Logic can. Mm-hmm. And he does. I mean, like, Logic, I mean, he go through it. They, Logic, Charlamagne, no, Charlamagne like, the guy was giving him a hard time about him. He was like, I don't believe, like you said about you need, you need to prove it with a parent. He yeah. was like, he was giving him a hard time. He was, I felt so sorry for him. Yeah, <laughs> he does not look like he's mixed. At all. I don't really That's even why. know. I know Logic the name, but I don't really let me look. I don't even know how he looks. Like, it's crazy because I hear that name Please. a lot and I know. Yeah. But I've Logic, never... looks like, Logic looks like a white man. And that's why I would call him white. I wouldn't call him mixed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> No, yes, uh-uh. he gonna have to prove. Uh, uh-uh. uh, no, 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 ma'am, no, sir. See, I think that's why that child made that suicide song oh, because everybody uh, just don't believe it. No, but you know I what? Did not you know this was logic. But you know what? We need more proof, logic, because we're, especially with that Rachel Dozoff lady who pretended that she was transracial, yes, being uh-huh. black. Like, lady, you did not have to do all that to help what he said community. he is what logic his daddy his what, his what? daddy he said i think he said his dad is his daddy. his daddy black yeah that's what he said uh, he did a documentary because uh, i was about to say we ain't seen that but he did do a documentary but i don't know if he hired that man and hey, we don't know <laughs> you know I don't know, like, your hair, I don't know uh, that's what he said i mean so really going by what courtney uh paper bag theory like and know. i hate that and i hate that we I, have to- I hate it too i really do but that that's is true but it's really true people. because if logic was darker we wouldn't we would just we wouldn't question like we wouldn't question it so much but even j cole even though he's lighter because he's more ethnic yeah, he's more ethnic. He his, more hair is, his hair is more kinky. He his his features and stuff relate more to to our community. It's like, of course, I feel like we're gonna relate him or or put him in our category more than Logic. Cause I looked at him and I'm just like, I no, did sir. research on him. I was like, this is no. creepy. This is creepy. But wow. I understand that there are some fair skinned people, you know that um you know but oh a prime example well no no drake i can't say that because drake kid is like he's really like mixed up with stuff like mm. you see his son yeah i seen him like yeah. that is a lot going on like he don't yeah. look like other than like the grandma you know like the blonde hair and right yeah you know, but um i don't know so we we're agreeing so we're I think we all, the question was, the, we're on the third question, everyone. The question was, um, does being called a beautiful black queen, does that upset you or excite you? And I think- and y'all draw yeah. some comments. I feel like we like going, we just carrying on up here. What y'all, what y'all thinking out there? <laughs> Let right. us know they, something. It looks like they just, us. they just listening. Um, y'all listening, drop something. How, how do y'all feel a, about the beautiful black queen? Like, drop, a, drop a crown, drop a crown in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Drop, drop the crown if you don't mind being called that. Or men, if you like calling your women that, and then drop the uh the lady with the X, you know, where she's like, oh, uh-uh. yeah. <laughs> you know, like uh uh-uh, uh, no, don't call me. Yeah, but um, I think we all agree that um, if it's coming with the right intentions, we don't mind. Um, but like I said, I really don't care about being called that because I don't have a king yet. So um, you know, I'll let him crown me with that title whenever that. Okay. Is. I yeah. that. Ain't no time for y'all. I'm going through some things. But um, actually, okay, huh? Okay, so the fourth question, the wait, last... Ashley. Oh wait, maybe that was something on the slide. Okay. <laughs> oh, what? Wow. She wasn't paying attention to me though. Your oh, okay. 
Your ponytail. I ain't worried about it. It's over with. It's you, done. You, okay. It's as done. long as you know. I just want yeah, to. Yeah, it's done. Okay, I was uh, bringing to attention. I'm like, wait a minute. I think that was like a little, you know. <laughs> Cordelia said, I don't mind it, but it doesn't excite me anymore. Because and, and she said, she probably said anymore because of the same reason. As yep, like, water so down. Now. Like, you don't even care about being called in. I mean, I still like it. Like I said, if it's on the right person. Oh, you know what? I heard something. I was listening to a song and you know how uh, with mixtapes or albums, you know how they have like in between songs, they have um like skits. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. okay so it was a i think it was a yg album so it was like maybe like a couple years ago but this guy it was funny but i liked it it made me think dealing with the uh bbq the beautiful black queen but mm-hmm. so he was saying he said yo he was talking to someone she was like yo i saw this fine girl i told her i said hey baby you look cute you look good and she said thank you and he said she kept on walking he said hold up b you know i'm thinking like Right, right. But his delivery is wrong. But let me tell you the message that he was giving. He okay. was saying, he said, thank you. All I get is a thank you. He said, I don't go around telling random women that they, hush, I don't go around <laughs> telling random women that they're beautiful. He said, I can't get nothing back like a, a you handsome, nice <laughs> hat, uh, pretty <laughs> shirt. Like, and it made me say that. Yeah, so, so I was thinking, I was like, we don't compliment men. We do I not do. compliment men. I do. I don't know because well, I, I compliment people. I, I compliment people too. I men, compliment, men. Women I compliment, compliment men yeah. too. Like if, I they, am more, if they gave I am me a compliment. Compl- compl- oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Courtney. I was saying I am more comfortable complimenting women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I do compliment men. It just depends on how platonic the compliment is depending on the situation. <laughs> And you no. can't just make up a compliment. I mean, you could, but I mean, just like that situation well, no, you were just saying, way. Ashley, just because he called her beautiful and she just said, thank you. I mean, she could have just well, said something. Heated. You I'm, know, because what, 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 what if he wasn't attractive to her or she didn't like his hat? She didn't like no shirt he had on. She can't say, oh yeah, thank you. I love it. I mean, you look handsome yourself. Like that would have turned into something else because it's like, oh, you I know it. you, you complimented me. So let's do this and thing. And he wants her know? phone number right. and then, yeah. you know. So and sometimes sense, you got to keep it cute and short, like, thank you, moving on. Right. In a <laughs> sense, I understand what he was saying. Yeah. I honestly do. In a sense, I understand, but at the same time, it's, you don't owe nobody nothing. Like, she don't owe him, uh, oh, you got yeah. some pretty guys. Thank you so much. You the one chose to sit there. It's like when girls go on a bad date and they feel like their time is wasted. You don't have to say yes to go on a date. <laughs> but you yeah. didn't know, though. You didn't know. Like, I think if exactly. you, there, you didn't know it. He didn't yeah, know you didn't know how it was gonna turn out. Girl. Yeah, you didn't know Wait, how what y'all talking about. about. She was like, for example, like if a if you go on a date and it, it was a bad date and the girl or you feel like you wasted your time, like you're not no, gonna know that you wasted your time until you go. You never oh, know yeah, how true. it's gonna turn yeah. out. You know, so you have to put yourself in that situation in order to find out. You know, or you know, I, like this is probably yeah, random too. Oh, when people true. go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say this. That reminded me too of like when people just say like, "Oh, women just be using guys to go on date and get free food." It's oh, just yeah, like if we go, if we, if you ask me to go get food, I mean, like, what are your expectations? Like, there is a few expectations that you could have just from the date alone. Like, you're gonna, we're gonna be talking. Like, you invited me to a food place. Like, of course, I'm gonna be going to get food. Like, you can't get upset and just be like, well, if you don't have deep conversations with me on the first date, then you're just using me for the food. Or if you don't seem excited when we're sitting there talking, then you're just using me. Like, like you mentioned, like, that's just stuff that you, vibes that you create on the date. That's stuff that you figure out about people on the date. Like, you don't know if it's going to be good or bad until you're actually there. So, of course, if it's bad, you're going to feel like, oh, this person, like, got me or, you know, this was a waste of my time. But you really won't know until you actually have the date. No. And what guy, oh, well, maybe it's just like, what guy has deep conversations? Like, I do my deep conversations over the phone. Like, I get there yeah. in order for the, us to even, that's where my levels go at. Like, before we even yeah. take me out to eat, I need to know, this, like, who, the type of person you are. Like, are we going to have those type of conversations and stuff? But um, traditionally, going back to the traditional stuff, guys pay you know but now oh, you know i told you they hate that money stuff <laughs> they hate they, that money stuff 
and but now I'm just like honestly, and maybe I need to cool off on saying this, but I always but I've said it, but uh guys don't never let me do it. But I'd be like, I'll just pay for my own food. Like that's over the phone, not while we're there sitting at the table. I'd be like, well, if we go out, I'll just pay for my own food. And they're like, no, nah, you ain't gotta do all that, you know. But I just throw it out there, like, hey, yeah. And, and I say I'll pay for my own food because I don't want you thinking or expecting anything and like you know, the, the meme that has been going around, like women do just want to go for free food, you know, which I don't think that's true, but well, unless you're just like totally no, not interested. I, I, I know, I know girls who did that. I know, I, I, I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm the first person to say men ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> I do know, I, I used, well, I'm talking about no more, but I used, I do know girls that have done that where they were literally going on dates for the free food. And that's it. Not not even like were they already in a relationship or they just w- wasn't interested at all, period. Just wasn't I don't know if maybe one or two wasn't in a relationship, but the ones that I do know, they they weren't in a relationship, but they had no interest in that, those people. I can't do that. I'm s i am I can't fake. I can't fake it. Like I cannot do it. Yeah. Like I just I feel like, like I gotta I have just, some level of knowing yes. if I'm gonna at least enjoy like have a good conversation or something. Like it could be somebody that you agree to go on a date with that you just kind of like, oh, I don't really think nothing, you know, it ain't gonna go further than this date, but I'll still go. Maybe they have good conversation or, you know, you just want to go enjoy company with the person. Like, you know, it may not go any further than that, but you're cool with just that one date and it just being done from that. But like Ashley said, I feel like you got to kind of have something like something. if you're just going on a date and you absolutely don't have any interest in a person, like that's going to be hard to get through, even if it's some good food. <laughs> Listen. I can't do it. I I can't do it. I I, I gotta have like yeah. And then you're gonna be asking like stupid questions. You're like, um, what you eat today? <laughs> like, like just stuff. You, like I, I can't do it. I can't think like yeah. that. I and a, and the girl Quay she commented and said that yes, her, I'm guessing her and her boyfriend, her husband, they did the same thing too. Um, over the phone first. I think what you were mentioning, Ashley, where you kind of get through those conversations on the phone first. And then you get to your date and, you know, have your date or whatever. I think that's what she was um, talking about. Okay. Um, All right. So, um, all right. So that's wrapping up the question about does being called a beautiful black queen, does that excite you or upset you? Okay. So this is the last question. And I think this is more like a firecracker. It sure was because, again, when I read it, I was like, what? (laughs) <laughs> the reason why I brought this up because like I said basically this whole show came about because of what I go through like the stuff that be on my mind and stuff yeah. all right so what the, I'm gonna say the question and I'm gonna explain where it come from okay so the question is or the statement is um black men and their uncontrollable fuck the police mentality right <sighs> what happened was I was conversing with a guy mm-hmm and so he's really aggressive. Like he was really super aggressive. Um, he he don't like the police as most black men don't are, I guess, black people, period, you know. Right. But uh I could tell I was like, he I could tell he was gonna be a problem. Like if he was to get pulled over, he would be a problem. So I said because of what's on TV and what's not just TV, like it's fake reality, but it's real shit that's going on with black men dying you know by the hands of the police hence uh black lives matter blue lives matter you know all that stuff i told him i said hey if we're dating if we're going to start dating i said um i need you to leave out the house with the mentality of coming back home um if you do get pulled over by the police even though i know you don't like them i said do what you need to do respectfully to bring your ass back home i said if we have a family, we got kids, I'm your wife and everything. I said, you need to think about that. Don't be thinking about, oh, he ain't going to play me. He ain't going to hold me. I know my rights. I know like, yeah. they don't give a fuck about that. Clearly we see it on TV. They don't care about that. So I said, when you walk, when you get pulled over, you roll down that window and you start doing all that back talk, even though you know you ain't do nothing wrong. I said to me, you telling me, fuck me, fuck our family, bump these kids, and you are on a suicide mission. Just do what you need to do. 
to make it back home to us. And we will, act, like you said earlier, Black women, we go handle it. Oh, I'm going to get on social media. I'm a, right, yeah. I, now that's one time the tears go. I might have to put on my <laughs> Nicki Minaj, you know, <laughs> and yeah. put on my acting skin. Not acting because it's real. It's going to be right. real tears and real concerns and real, like, it's going to get handled. Best believe that. But just make it back home. Like, ugh, yeah. I hate that rah-rah, like, fuck 12 and da-da-da, and they can do this and they can do that. I'm like, so so you initially you're telling me that too you like because you're not trying to make it back home you know what's gonna happen unfortunately we don't want it to happen but we done seen it on tv like i i saw uh, um i posted uh maybe a couple months ago uh, um um uh, an uh, ad or whatever it was like a um a screenshot of something where it was like check on your black friends like we're emotionally tired like we're we're, we're drained with the marches yeah. and the scene cutting on the tv and breaking news and like it's just you know so that's how that's why i came up with that because of him because he had the mentality of that and i was like you don't think that's dangerous you so you think because you know your rights and you're gonna make sure you tell him you know your rights and you ride with a, a, a camera and you got, they don't care. Yeah. Change your ass, make your ass, canine, your, canine dog your ass. Like, yeah. so you, so, so I said, basically you telling me to take out a nice insurance policy on you. That's what you say. I agree, Ashley, to an extent, you know, I feel like, you know, like you mentioned, because of the relationship that black men particularly have with the police um, and the black community, it's already gonna be on the defense. Mm -hmm. Like black men are already on the defense, even if it's something don't even got nothing to do with you. You see the police over there, it's like, I'm gonna go this way because I already know if I go over there or get close to it, I could be linked into something that I have absolutely right. nothing to do with so it's like automatically it's just like when you mention police black it, it just it's just not a, a good feeling to be in you know what I mean and I understand you know because at one point I felt the same way about you know like you know at the end of the day we know like police brutality exists we know that yeah. they target black men and so we know these things and although we know that it's not right like you mentioned, Ashley, like at the end of the day, I want you to come home. And it's almost like it's you have to bite the bullet. And it's not right that yeah. we have to do that. It's not right that anybody has to do that. But at the end of the day, it's like, I want you to be able to come home. So it's like, even if you have to just comply or That's do whatever, fine. it's like, I would rather you do that than to get shot. I would rather you just, you know, bite your tongue and not say nothing and still be able to come home. But again, that that's what they, I don't want to say that's what they want us to think, but a lot of the instances that's been happening recently within the last few years, you've seen the situations where they are completely calm and they're compliant. It's just that they don't like to see that you know your rights. They don't want to see that you can be calm and still articulate without raising your voice. You know, they see that as threatening. Even if you're saying, okay, well, you did X, Y, Z, and you tell them, um, no, I didn't, and this is my right to do X, Y, Z. They're going to be like, oh, she thinks she's doing this, or he thinks he knows more about the law than me. Even if you're being completely non-aggressive, but you're still complying, like they're going to still see that as a threat because they want to exert that authority over you. So it's just like, even if you're not being aggressive, you still see the instances where police still abuse their authority. So it's like now it's, it's really hard to like, Say that or you know when they tell people okay they used to tell guys okay pull your pants up dress like somebody right. act like you got some sense all these other things it's just like you can do all of that still you can have on a full-blown suit and if they still feel like they don't like you as a black man walking up and down this street and you look suspicious they're gonna pull you for looking suspicious it don't matter if you got on the suit now it might it, it might be harder for them to prove that to the public. Like we know this person, they're upstanding the citizen, all this other stuff. But in their mind, oh nope, that was a suspicious black man. I don't care if he did have on a suit, he disguising himself. So it's just like even in those instances, it's hard to say don't be aggressive. Because if I don't be aggressive, what? How do you explain the situation where you have these men that's completely complying, hands up? I don't have anything. I'm doing exactly what you told me to do, and boom, I get shot in the back. 
Like you behind me, like I'm not even coming towards you. I get shot in the back. Like I wasn't aggressive. I'm doing what you told me to do, but because you feel like you feel threatened by me, like you just do those things. So it's really hard to say, like not be aggressive or like to have black men kind of control their emotions, um, their emotions or the way they feel about, you know, towards the police, because you got you know, long examples of, of, of how all of that has been abused. Like you, you don't have many examples, unless it's like, you know, in a, in your community and y'all just have a, a close knit relationship where you know the cop or whatever the case may be. Overall, it's just black men, they're not gonna have a very good relationship with police, especially like black men that um, are in the hood or, lo- or in low poverty areas. Like they're not gonna have that relationship. Maybe, you know, not every black man is afraid of the police. They don't hate the police. You know, some of them, they are police officers. And, you know, you know, much respect yeah, to mean, them, whatever the case may be. Yeah, you know, respect. Yeah, because, you know, when we when we start talking about, like, you know, reform, reforming and all that other stuff and really getting our black faces in, you know, that's another place they need to be, too, um, just for safety reasons. But, you know, it's just it's just different. You know, some black people, some black men, you know, they have, they don't have any fear of the cops. They like cops or whatever case may be. So again, it kind of just goes by, you know, the examples that you have around you, but widespread is just not a good mix, you know, with black men and the police. And, you know, it's just, I mean, it's expect, I mean, you have to expect that. I mean, if you just look at the history, I mean, it's not a surprise. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a surprise, but like you said, Ashley, I just would rather if I'm gonna have to choose something, I'm I'm just gonna rather you do what you gotta do to make it back home. Whether that's like a spouse or like my brothers or your uncles, your cousins, it's just like yo, I know like it's some crazy stuff going on right now, and know the way that they treat us is not right. But at the end of the day, like I just rather you do whatever you gotta do to come home. Like if they tell you right. to do this, put your hands on the steering wheel, do whatever, because you just need to come home. I would rather you do that than to be shot, you know. And and at this point even when i did the you know they slapped the phone up. even when they do that now it's it's so like you said widespread that you got back up i mean the police got back up but you got back up because you got people out when they, now when you see cars police cars yeah we do go the other way but i ain't getting in that but now it's like oh no hold on let me let me take yeah. my phone out and record like now that's you got true. people because of everything that's going on but um like i said i would rather you stand beside me at this news conference and we talk about what happened with everybody's video that was taken versus me standing at this news conference with my attorney beside me and I'm standing there crying, you know, wanting you with my children, with our children and stuff, you know, so I know that you, you know your rights and all this other stuff, but please, please don't go on a suicide mission. I I get that, you know, it is, it, even when you are calm, but just, just, I guess you got to go. And I hate that because I, I, I saw something where, you know, it's so sad. It's so yeah. sad, but it's it's so needed. Like black men are teaching their, teaching their sons how to drive. And it's not, you know, parallel park or, you know, stop it. It's driving while black. Like yeah. when you get pulled over by do this, make sure your hands are here. Make sure you got everything here where, you know, you say, hey, um, reach with that. Hand. I'm like, that shit is sad, bro. Like it, it is, is sad. Really but it's it never really is. sad. As necessary as it is, it's very sad. But that's it like, is. I'd rather you know yeah. me hope for the best or, you know, act like things are going to change in the next five years or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's sad that thoughts? we have to do that. But I mean, you kind of got to, just like, you know, with, situations where you know I've seen it a lot of times in movies it happens in real life you know you have a kid let's just say it's a black a black kid black boy you know he has his white friend you know the parent has to have conversations with him because it's just like you get in a situation you can't react the same way your white friend react because he can get away with something you on the other hand you can't get up in there you get stuck like for example if we're using like getting stopped by the police I mean, they can get away with, you know, I didn't do anything. Da, 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 da. You know, they're going to be a little, they're going to handle him a little bit different because if you get up there talking about why you doing this and why they doing that, they're going to be ready to pull that gun. Like, it's like you really have to talk to them because it's just like their interactions is going to be so different than their counterparts. And as much as they want to believe that, you know, it's going to be the same, it's really not, you know, it's just not. And it's, 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 
it's hard to have those conversations and it's a shame that we have to but again we want if we want our our black men our kids family members to come home safe we gotta have those conversations right it's just the reality of the thing of yeah. everything yeah Definitely. Would you like to add anything to it, Courtney? Or no, I mean, y'all basically said everything that I was thinking. Because I mean, a black men are probably always always going to have that you know fuck twelve type of mentality because they are a target. Minorities in general are a target. Black men especially. So I mean, that's always going to be there. I don't I don't see that changing anytime soon. But you know, worse I would. It comes to a point where is your pride more important than your family? So, like you guys said, get home get home yeah. I, but I understand where you're coming from you know type right. of thing so, yeah. I mean there's nothing I can add on because I was literally thinking the same thing yeah because we have to do that too like this kind of different too as black women it's just like we get into spaces where we're seen as inferior or we can't speak up or whatever the case may be it's just like I gotta save my job I can't really say what I want to say because they're gonna think I'm I'm miss know-it-all and I know more than CEO even if I know I do I can't say it because they're going to think X, Y, Z. So it's just like, okay, we got to kind of bite the bullet. Even though we know better, we got to act dumb so these people can think they're doing something. We got to tone it down a little bit. I'm like, Literally, I was just telling Ashley about the situation at the clinic. I was externing at the clinic that um, I'm working at, and uh -huh. I, they hired me on. I'm the only Black girl there. The next extern that came after me, she came from my same school, and she's a Black girl, too. Now, two of the girls in the back got real bad attitudes. One's like fake, nice, nasty. And then the other one, she's just been nasty from the beginning. Like, I respect her the most because she was a bitch from the beginning. She was a <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the other girls, they like to act like they nice and then time bitch. But she, the girl, the other black girl who was ex turned in there, she left early one day. And I noticed she's gone because, I mean, we don't want black people in that building. I'm going to notice she's gone. <laughs> but mm -hmm. she left early one day and we were talking in the break room the next day and she was like, She's like, I had to leave early yesterday. I said, yeah, I noticed that. And she was like, cause she was like, I had to, when I went to lunch, I had to sit down and think like, is it me? Am I tripping? And I was like, no, you're not. I was like, those girls are just bitches. And they're, you know, they want your failure. <laughs> like, they mm -hmm. just, They're just nasty. Yeah. She, was like, she was like, I have to leave because I was going to get real. She got quiet. And then she's like, this like black girl. You know what I mean? She's like, but they're going to look at me like this angry, upset, bitter black girl getting crazy in this office and not someone with like a valid reason of why they're upset. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. really, like, I was like, I'm going through it now every day. Girl. I was like, I know exactly what you mean because I know the minute yes. that I get smart, they're going to look at me like the angry black girl. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's exactly that's kind of going legit. back to what we said the, during the last episode is we have to start talking about as black men and women the things that we go through and the things that we have to overcome on a daily basis just like that even in those two examples you have us talking about how the interactions with the cops how it is for black men then you have black women you go places it's like you always have somebody trying to silence you and you can't really say what you want so like you're really like you're really censoring yourself all all day and not being able You're to so really sad. say how you really feel so it's just like we have to understand like the things that we both go through and how right. can we help each other like how can and I really want to see the day where it's just like so natural like how we can get to a point where black men are the first one to defend the black woman where black women are I the would... first one to to defend the black man like like you said what by him like I don't even know him like that's how I am that I really like when I see stuff like that like I don't even know what this brother been through but if I see him like having a hard time with somebody like I'm gonna see if I can like try to assist or like you know, a <laughs> black man see a woman you know struggling doing something you ain't got to say oh well, that ain't my woman her man need to handle that it's like no like my sis needs some help let me just slide over here and see like what kind of assistance like I want to see us get to that point where it's just like, nah, I ain't gonna let you talk about I him. Honestly, I ain't gonna let you talk about her. Good, that's a challenge for that we should do. But I think so. Women, but more than black men, but that's just my opinion. You said that's what, Courtney? I said I think black women are more on board and ready to. Oh, do for that sure. Than yeah. Black men are right now because I feel like I've seen black yeah. women step in the case. I know that me, like when, like I was talking about the other extern and stuff. Like I was mm -hmm. working there, she was the other extern, but we kind of built like a bond real fast, like not like close like we talking every day but like the understanding you know yeah. what I mean it's like when you're like the only black person in the room and you look for another black person just to yeah that there's a comfortability it's yeah. like that and I feel like black women are more inclined to do that 
we are even as a whole like social yeah. issues social justice like whenever it's something with a black man black man black woman black women are the first ones to show up it's yeah. a black men a little while to get there when it comes to defending black women or taking up for us a or long even, time say, with me. Or a even long saying time. something on our behalf it's like we really have to call them out i this is how i feel i feel like we have to call them out on like dang like you ain't gonna have my back like after i had your back then it's like okay let us speak up and say something versus like it should be instant like even I mean, hate to say it, but it's like, even if we don't know the entire story, if we feel like you've been wrong, we can get the details later, but it's just like, <laughs> I know he's been wrong. Like, it ain't right, but let me let me see what else happened and then we'll get the details. It's like, right. with black men, it's just like, I feel like sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, it's like, okay, wait a minute, let me let me get all the details first before I even like- and even when they do, they out. still don't do shit. Yeah. <laughs> even when they do, they still be like, I mean, they ain't got nothing to do with me. I mean, right. I hate that. But like, come come on. On. like, well, she shouldn't have been over there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, that is so crazy because we are, like you said, Courtney, I feel like we are more advanced in that area. Like, we are always, I feel like we're more so the ones that's going to be the first to respond when it comes to, like, you know, defending the black man. I feel like black men, they've been doing, you know, okay, but I feel like we're more advanced in that area. We I would are. like to see it more. Like, I really would like to see it more. I think that would be like so ideal. That's why a lot of the times when I hear like dialogue, when it's like a black woman say, oh, we go through this, we go through that. And then the black man is like, no, we go through this. It's like, y'all are really not hearing each other. Y'all are talking at each other, but y'all are really not listening and saying like, dang, like, let me understand what black women go through as a black man and black men, uh, black women like, okay, let me understand what black men go through. And how can like, if you saying like, if you, if both parties are on board, it's like a black woman is saying, how can I do what I need to do to make it, you know, I don't know, more comfortable for the black man or whatever. And he's doing the same thing for us. It's just like, that should be like a win-win. Like if I'm doing everything I can and they doing everything they can, like it should all work out perfectly. Like that's just, I guess that's just in a perfect world. Like I, I guess- I'll tell you this, that I have started implementing There'll always be competition. Yeah. I, I, I started implementing that. I, I, I don't, I don't give black men a hard time as much anymore. <laughs> I don't, like with yeah. dating and stuff. Like I just be like, I, I ask questions now. I be like, are you <laughs> look okay? at Courtney. No, I mean I don't like. No, I mean, no, I'm not talking about for you specifically. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like. She was like, nah. <laughs> because, because, um, real quick, because I was like, it hit me. Well, not hit me, but you know, I just been, you know, I'm older now, so I start to see, I pay attention to stuff more now. And I'm like, you know what? They do when they walk out the door, they do have a hard time. Like at their job and they now they looking out for the police and they people on the job getting on their damn nerves and this and that. Like they just yeah. got so much going on out in the world. So when they come in the house, that's their like how we, you know, we're trying to stop. Well, me, I take my off and I, take come, right, yeah. you know, yeah, like right, so. I right. think like when they come home, like when they take them boots off, that uniform off, like they just need to chill. So I'm not on them. I'm not on them like that. Like, hey, did you do? Hey, you know, so I, I get more leeway now. <laughs> What's your hand up for Courtney? <laughs> Ashley probably already know, but this is my thing, right? So not to be that person that's like, well, we do this, they <laughs> do that. But I'm just saying, like, we go through struggles too now. Yeah. I need peace you, you're as well. You, you're right. And that's why the guys that I talk to now, one of the things I always ask them, because I, you know, I do would like to have a family. I say, are you okay with um having a nanny? Because I don't want a man thinking I'm gonna be superwoman, because I'm not doing it. Like I'm yeah. I'm not doing, I'm not gonna be running these businesses, uh hopping on you all the damn time cooking for you running after these damn <laughs> children doing homework i'm not doing all that like because yeah. you i feel like that's when the problems come in bitch. huh i said just because you can doesn't mean you want to be super bitch yeah i don't want i don't i don't i'm not doing it because i already know just from looking and observing and watching divorce court i know you can't do it all like you, you you're gonna be straight <laughs> i love it i'm not gonna lie like because i'd be like taking notes yes. i'm not doing it exactly that. yes i'm not too. doing that you know okay they, okay you know um matter of fact i commented on something like two days ago uh it was about it was a couple a black couple from georgia i didn't know that they was even from georgia but um but i was watching it but he was saying they was trying to save for a house and she just like she just always want to go somewhere I always want to he's like we ain't got no money like she always he said she even called my job and scheduled a day off. He said, I went to work and my supervisor's like, what you doing here? 
you still got the day off. He was like, I didn't request no day off. He said his wife called up they they took to take the day off of him so they can go to on a trip. And so I commented under there, I was like, um, I said, Oh, she like to travel. We need to be friends. I said, but not the type of friend where because they said they he said they ain't got no money. I said, but not the kind of friend where she got enough money to get there, but while we there, she's borrowing money from me. You know that lady comment reply back to me. <laughs> She replied back to me. I was like, ma'am, I don't know who you are. I mean, I, mean, I know you was a real person, but I never yeah. sh- And she was like, I don't do that. I got my own money. I'm like, girl, I don't reply to strangers, but uh, I know they watching. So now I be careful about the things I say under the divorce court um, comment section. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I found out that they're from Georgia because I went on her page. They're from Georgia. I went to her husband's page. He don't be up. They like that. Oh, you know, God. but, um, you know, but all right. So basically wrapping it up, uh, the comment was on um, black men and their un- uncontrollable fuck the police mentality. Um, we just, overall, we want y'all to make it home safe. And we do understand that even when you comply, you still kind of get resistance a little bit, but just do, just think about coming home. We want you home. Like I said, I'd rather don't have me standing at that news conference crying and holding up a picture of you. I'd rather you stand beside me and we talk about your experience and what happened and get this settlement and you can take me to Hawaii. Okay, you know. But um see you guys next Sunday, which will oh, Ashley, Ashley, before you go, this kind okay. of tie in a little bit to what you was what we just talked about and what you kind of mentioned early earlier about the um love languages, because I feel like, you know, whenever we just use the example of the man kind of coming home and he wants you know he's been through whatever and he kind of wants his peace whenever he comes home you know the woman like Courtney said could want the same peace and quiet or whatever the case (laughs) may be but I just feel like you just have to learn like how how to love your partner like somebody's maybe like okay some kind of acts of service or whatever and somebody else like may need like just words of affirmation like for you to just say you know I appreciate you you know, doing this for our kids, or I appreciate you doing this for me, or whatever the case may be, that might boost them up a little bit more. So I think Definitely. like touching all those love languages and stuff like that is, I th- think y'all said y'all did it before, but you know. Yeah, but we can bring it back. We can bring it back because now we, we sure got- can bring it back. As long as you want to <laughs> talk about it too, Whitney. Not yes. oh, look, yeah, look, I, I'm not even asking Whitney to be a hair. <laughs> yes, um, I'm see, you here. bring I'm you bring here. a different <laughs> perspective, like because we all re- all three of us already. Um, brought a different perspective and um Courtney did you tell her or was that more behind the scenes because when I had did the first flyer with you up there oh she was like, I said we look like we need a sitcom <laughs> oh <laughs> and look and, and um she was like she said you look more like the business friend yeah I said, I said no Whitney looks more like the attorney our lawyer friend because she oh. didn't get me out you know because I'm the hood one like you shouldn't yeah. get me out <laughs> that's funny she but, don't um, Mm-hmm. She jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we you, you know what? We, see, we didn't even have that many questions and stuff. We didn't. That's so crazy. We didn't really have no questions. You know, I feel like this time, maybe we're going to have to look in, but I feel like this time, honestly, I feel like we was like talking to each other and like, we and, didn't but it wasn't that. that many comments this time though. Like, they're yeah. just watching. Ashley, when you go back, do another a uh, sting question. It'll be in that comments again. No, I'm talking about that. Sting Whenever question. I put like black this and black that, or you know, yeah, yeah can, you know yeah. how the news, you know how the media, like they have the headlines just to attract the people. We gotta have us like crazy headlines so they can be like, oh, I can't wait to get my <laughs> right. <laughs> if I put in there like parents and stuff, whatever, but I'm gonna come up with something. Um, yeah, <laughs> I got time to like because I be pulling stuff off of uh off my timeline anyway. I be like, now she knows she wrong for that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Question. I just talk about this on the podcast, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> and then also everybody that's watching, like, if you got something that you want to talk about, inbox us. You know, and yeah, um, I see my DMs are like, open. Yeah. Not for, for not podcast, for podcast say, stuff. Say, for podcast for stuff. Right. <laughs> not for podcast stuff. Podcast <laughs> specifically. You know what? Was you on the episode, Whitney, when um when we was talking about oh no no no, I think that was just me and Courtney when we was talking about the um the uh them dropping stuff in our uh inboxes and stuff like dick pictures and stuff. I think that was just we talked oh, about no. 
but it was just you and me when we talked about well that. it ain't stopping it this is steady going it's like energizing money it's steady going it's steady oh gosh going. have you you haven't gotten any uh flirting inboxes yet flirting yeah but not no um pictures <laughs> You, so you've never like posted like a picture or something or like a story and like automatically they sent you like a dick pic. No, ma'am. <laughs> oh, it's, it's coming. It's <laughs> coming. It's <laughs> coming. I wish somebody would. Well, you better well go ahead and get ready. Uh-uh, <laughs> right. No, uh uh-uh, uh. No. I, I, is my crazy. question is I want to know who are the women. And what does this do for them that, you know, that are like, oh, yes, yeah, send me more? Because there's a reason, like, if especially someone I don't know who just automatically sent me that. Yeah, like, why would you do that? Like, I know. Who put it in your head like that was okay? Who, who said that? that I, I don't know? want the penis pictures, but if you're going to send them, make sure you all the way right. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want, I want paper towel roll pictures. I don't want tissues. <laughs> I don't want Tisha roll pictures. I want paper towel roll pictures. You know. Oh my gosh, that I'm is saying. so funny. See, so, this is other stuff we got to go through. Receiving unsolicited uh, <laughs> peen pictures. Oh, we like, talked about it, but we can we can go there again. Okay. That, was, look, that was with the the successfully single one. <laughs> like now we can talk about it on the. I noticed that these guys be right. dropping dick pictures. You know. I mean, I kind of like it a little bit, but if it's like paper towel <laughs> pictures, not yeah. tissue roll. But from somebody random, like if you don't really, if you never, if you don't know me like that and we never had conversation, what would make you comfortable to even drop that in my inbox? I and only what, like what reaction I've asked for. <laughs> yeah, and what what you expecting me to do? Like you want me to be like, oh yeah, you look good. Let's talk. Or like let's. I, I, Listen, somebody I, has I, to be for them to be doing it though Whitney that's the thing like someone has somebody to like, well but you know what it was somebody they did it to somebody and the, somebody liked it and they feel like oh well, such and such like it let me see if I could just drop it on the next person and no you can't do that listen I had a guy I, I hadn't even known him 48 hours and um that's like it was around um New Year's Eve because uh his daughter was visiting and they had fireworks and all this other stuff. But anyway, so we had guys phone. He was like, oh, I'm about to go take a shower. I was like, oh, okay. Next thing you know, I get a, a duo video. That thing slang it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I just didn't like, he was too skinny for me. But I was like, I said, okay, you working with something. But I didn't ask for that. It just came as a surprise, right. you know? But yeah. Um, but you know, I just thought about like some, I, maybe it's like, you know how like some girls, like all they can offer is their body. I think some guys be thinking the same thing because I don't got one where the thing was like huge, bro. Like, yeah, like, that's true. That might girl. be true. Yeah, but you, you are. Right. And they ain't about shit. Like, <laughs> that's true, about Courtney. Shit. Yeah. If, he was, if he was a cleaner guy, and I'm not saying like hygiene wise, like if he if his life was like better, I probably would have like conversed with him a little bit more to find out what I did like though, you know, but. I didn't want to because I'm like, you like 45, you stay with your mom. I don't think you employ. You got a mouth full of gold. Like you oh smoke gosh. weed. Like oh I just, I just didn't like it. I, that's I, a good I think, point. That's a good point though, Courtney. That's probably, that's probably what it is. Like those type of guys who do things like that, because it's just like, what else do you have? Like if, and if you have anything better, you're going to present your best to somebody. Like, you know, if I feel like my personality or my, whatever i'm gonna let that only women think like that though men don't care about that i yeah. think they do i really do think they do like i ain't about shit i ain't got a car i ain't got my own place with my <laughs> dick dick i didn't see girls oh, at crazy. Oh, okay, yeah. okay 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 yeah okay. that's what she okay. means okay. yeah okay yeah. you know what honestly i don't get the my dick is big i get that um i love to eat pussy and that's what I get. I get the I love the eat Oh, you mean that's, like, what, you, that's the what you, oh, okay, I see what you Yeah, mean. so that's instead of them talking about their dick, they talk about, yeah. I love to eat pussy, talking, oh, I can do this. And I'm like, what they got to do with me? Like, you hungry? <laughs> what the fuck they got to do with me? You know what I mean? you hungry. <laughs> but so, so when they talk about stuff like that, automatically that, that lets me know, like, oh, you just want a sexual relationship. Like, that's what that right. is. So I, I go ahead and let them find what they're looking for, because that ain't me. So. Right. Y'all, let me go. They waiting on me at the casino. So I'm gonna try to wait that time. Well, all right then. Uh, thank you guys, and see you next Sunday.
Bye. You too, Keista. Yeah, Keista, we miss you. You and your mystery bae. I'm, I'm about to start the research. I'm about to do the private oh, message. Gosh. And then put, put on your hat. Put on, put on your hat. Put on your hat. Guess what? What? I forgot to record. <laughs> but it's on oh. Facebook Live. It's on Facebook Live. I, I forgot to record. Okay, but so I, is that something we need to make sure we check off the list every time? Yeah, we let me know. Yeah, be like, hit record. Okay. I did not. But I can pull it off of Facebook, but I just like it to automatically lock, like yeah. be in my, my folder. But all right, y'all. Bye. All right, bye, y'all. Bye.